Hi everyone. We hope that you're all doing well in spite of the current difficult circumstances due to the COVID-19 situation. Despite having our sixth form lives cut short, we would still like to keep in touch with all of you. So we decided to interview a couple of Year 13s and some of our teachers to see how they're doing. We hope you enjoy. So what's one thing you miss about Kings? One thing I miss about Kings is Friday period 7 and 8 classics lessons where we were a nightmare and I can only apologise to Mr Prillo for that but we also laughed so much and ate cake and generally had a great time. Of course I'll miss the banter and the time spent with friends both in and out of the classroom but the one thing I'll really miss is this scampi from the canteen. Oh and everyone taking the mick out of me because supposedly I go around telling everyone I'm a pilot or something. I don't know where they get that idea from. Having all your mates in the same place every day, having a good laugh at lunch, going to Mackey's at least twice a week, the cookies at the canteen and how the teachers make an effort to make sure that King's is more than just an ordinary school. Uh, there are three things that I'll mainly miss about King's. Seeing my friends every day, seeing other teachers, and the motives at Tom's. I miss my friends and seeing people on a daily basis, the whole atmosphere and I miss the fun parts of lessons and of course I miss Mr Drakeford and the bulletin. I'm missing seeing students and colleagues in person, otherwise I wouldn't do this job. But I think the one main thing is Mr Dunn and his witty comments, his dreadful music choices at times. I miss him in the office. 12 years. Hi, you're 13. Hope you're all well. What have I been doing in lockdown? Well, I've been doing a bit of gardening with my best mate here. Say hi everybody. Hi everybody. So uh, yeah, so we've been out in the garden, doing a bit of gardening, doing a bit of walking around, social distancing. So hi Carolina, hi Alex, really good to uh, catch up with you. Um, so, sorry, how have I been missing uh, Kings? Well, the first couple of days of isolation was fine, but to be honest, it's wearing a little bit thin now. So I guess the thing that I've really missed is being in school and having my year 13 class to teach and also seeing it through to the, um, the end and getting their result. Uh, and I guess the thing that I also miss is is my lesson on Thursday with my year 13 maths class, which directly followed the uh, the JD 5-6, and having to stretch myself a couple of extra steps when I had the year 13 class. Okay, great catch up with you. Take care, all the best of soon, be good. What do I miss? That's a very good question. I guess what I miss could be described as, on average, the best. You just get used to them being there, all lined up and well turned out, and then, one day they're just not there and you realise how much you miss them and how they're probably not average, they're probably above average and you really do miss them. Yeah, the chicken and mayo hot baguettes at break are some of the best I've ever known. Oh, what would you say? Year 13? Not escaping being their assistant head from year 7 to 11. All those characters and shenanigans. Of course I'll miss them too. Good luck, keep your powder dry. The thing I miss most about the King's School is the routine, as well as the people and the people I consider friends. So I miss being a charities prefect, having that responsibility, and also actually having to go to school, go to the lessons, just simple things like that is what I miss most about the King's School. Yeah, what have I missed most about King's? Well, to be honest, I think it's the, the routine, the morning routine that I miss the most. Making myself a nasty cup of black instant coffee, grabbing a couple of biscuits out the tin, going past the sign saying no, food or drink in the computer room, sorry about that. And then just sort of sitting with my tutor group and teasing the girls about their boyfriends and teasing the boys about their earrings. Wondering if Mahanor was gonna turn up before lunchtime and wondering what excuse Ronaldo would have for getting in late. And then we would go on to the bulletin. And um, I've enjoyed the bulletin so much I've missed it that I started making my own at home. So here's the first one. We'd always know what whose birthday it was. That's a dinner party I'd like to go to. Hello Year 13. What is the one thing that I miss about Kings? Take a deep breath Mrs Willis, don't cry. It's got to be the people and by that I do mean the staff, I genuinely do mean the staff and my colleagues but I probably just marginally more mean you all. I am somebody that loves working with young people. I get a buzz out of working with you, even if it's Charlie Jeffries swearing, if it's 
maybe I shouldn't mention any names, challenging me with their behaviour, or it's simply just dropping in my office, Mrs Willis, I've lost my parking pass for the third time. Yes, I'll do you another one. Or a green slip, or a red slip or a white slip, or anything else that you seem to lose. So yes, it's you, it's all of you. And the fact that we can't say goodbye properly is the worst of it all. What's one thing you've learned during this lockdown? Um, being in lockdown has taught me that it's important to do 30 minutes of exercise every day. Lockdown has taught me how selfish my brothers are, especially when it comes to food and drink. Whether they're bulking or not, they always try and take my food and everything that's in the house. For example, if I really wanted this Kit Kat, I'd have to hide it, just so they, just so they couldn't get it. Well, I suppose primarily it's about recognising the things that matter to me, the things that are important. Like right now, to be honest, I'd rather see my hairdresser than my husband. The greys, they're real, they're really taking over. Um, I guess it's about priorities really, priorities for life. This lockdown has taught me that without a plan or any sense of like direction, nothing is going to happen. Like, honestly, it, it sounds like, it sounds sort of stupid, like everyone thinks, yeah, you know, if I just wing it, like, I'll, I'll just end up doing something. No, no you won't. I thought that, like, at the start of lockdown, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'll do a run every couple of days, like I'll do some home workouts, maybe a bit of a, maybe a bit of homework as well. And uh, yeah, that lasted about three days. And then since then, I've been waking up at three in the afternoon. I've been procrastinating till about six in the afternoon. I probably eat somewhere in between there. And then from about six in the afternoon till three, four in the morning, I'm just on the piss floor every day. Like, <laughs> and then I sleep and I wake up at three in the afternoon again. Oh my God, I'm driving my parents insane. My advice is just, yeah, try to plan your days, plan your weeks. Like, you don't have to do like a proper thing, but just plan something. I've learned to, to reevaluate what's important and to focus on the moment. It certainly made me realise how important family and friends are and how small things and actions can make me really happy. The Thursday clap, the early morning walk, the weekly Zoom quiz and finally I know one thing, I'm not ready to retire because I miss you all so much. Being in lockdown has taught me so many things. It's taught me to be more appreciative of the people around me and just show gratitude every day for what we have because so many people in this pandemic have suffered so much worse than we have and we need to be thankful every day for the people who have put their lives out there to help us and just everyone that has suffered from this because um, I think it's something we all really need to learn from, just to be more grateful for things. Um, it's taught me that you should leave hair dyeing to the professionals, because as you can see, not everyone suits pink hair. Um, it's taught me how quickly a routine can just die out, like I've gone from going to bed at 6 a.m. every day to waking up at 4, 5 p.m., not even knowing what sunlight is anymore. I'm surprised I'm awake now. And it's also taught me that I'm really getting sick of my parents because they've asking, been asking me to do TikTok dances every day, which is when you know that you need to leave the house. What are you doing to keep yourself occupied? I'm doing lots of abstract art, so like wax, silk painting, oil pastels, charcoal, any material really, just abstract art because it's cool. I'd love to say that I've been up every morning, bright and early, being productive. I haven't, all the time. I haven't even made me bed. I've been going out, getting some fresh air, shaving my head. Sorry Mrs Willis. So I volunteered to share how I'm spending my time in quarantine and of course other than getting up at nine every morning and doing all my schoolwork, I've also been trying to find new ways to keep fit and healthy and keep up my wrestling. Aggie, can I have the remote? I want to watch something. No, I'm watching something really clever on the telly. Aggie, give me the remote. Go away, Oscar. All right, you've done this to yourself. Please. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no! Pin! No! Pin! No! Pin! I've been revising, obviously. I've been working very hard. Running 5Ks each day. 
practicing self-discipline in the face of such an adverse situation that we're all in. Also, I've been learning guitar. Let me play you a song. Hang on. This is more like it. Alright, here we go. So Joseph, what have you been doing for your quarantine? I've been learning how to do donuts, not in Tesco, man. I'm either doing some craft, lots of reading, I've uh, got a little vegetable patch just outside here um, that we're doing and of course I'm walking uh, with the dog quite a lot. Current plans, really just trying to sort out the house, maybe just trying to relax whenever I can. Aside from marking and setting work, um, I've tried to run every day four miles, uh, I've walked to the shop, lots of reading, um, quite a bit of watching of television uh, and some films. The garden has never looked so good, uh, the boards are immaculate, the fences have been painted uh, and all is tidy and clean. So priority one for the future is to get my hair cut. Uh, secondly, I want to come back to work so I can do what I enjoy doing the most, that's being with all of you. What have I been doing during quarantine? Nothing really, it's been quite quiet. Can't think of anything really, that's been keeping me... Oh yeah, yeah I've actually been really busy. What would one message be to your post-quarantine self? My message to my post-quarantine self would be to start doing something that's actually productive instead of watching TikToks all the time and doing the subsequent dances like the Say So one. And to also use breaks effectively and wisely because all this time without having a set schedule and just being able to focus on myself you need to appreciate how you can reduce your stress using breaks because they're extremely useful. My note to my post-quarantine self is to appreciate going on Instagram and not having to look at all the annoying challenges. Never take a spoon's night out for granted ever again. Honestly, you never know how much you love something until you can't have it anymore. To stop uh, putting off things that I want to do and just do it and not take eating out for granted, especially at McDonald's. Always try and get out as much as you can because being shut in for so long just makes you appreciate how great everywhere else you go is. Like, even if it's just in and around Peterborough and seeing your friends, but also seeing places for the first time as well and just enjoying the outdoors. The internet is whack and the definition of challenge needs to be redefined. These blue light filter glasses were the best purchase ever. And no matter how tough or hard life gets, shaving your hair is not the only option. Two pieces of advice, uh, two sides of the same coin really. Uh, in the famous words of my gran, just enjoy it while you can. Um, and secondly, don't forget to, to chill out and slow down a little bit uh, because the takeaway from all of this really is um, you never know what's going to happen. Never take for granted spending time with your family and friends again. So firstly, I tell myself the gin cupboard needs a restock. The second thing would be to maybe stop baking so much now. I'd also tell myself to remember how important it is to keep in contact with friends and family. And finally, when we all bar back to normal, to remember even when year 13 are driving you bar me in class, how much you actually missed seeing your classes and doing the teaching whilst we couldn't do it. Having been at the school for over 30 years, I know how important the leavers service and assembly is to you as it is to me. Today in this very uncertain time, just remember to keep positive, 
make the most of all the opportunities, enjoy life and most importantly be kind and caring and remember the King's School family will always be here for you. Take care and keep in touch. This is it, Year 13. I really hope everything works out. Um, it's such a shame we couldn't be there to see you. And it's been a pleasure to be a form tutor to some of you and to have taught for some of you over the years as well. So to quote Carl Sagan, the nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of stardust. Take care. I just want to say good luck to you all for the future. Uh, stay in touch with each other, stay in touch with us here at King's if we can help you in any way. We've been really pleased to do so. Hope you like my new haircut and from me and my best mate, I've bye bye. A, I've had a haircut too. Yeah, that was me. Did my best. Bye everybody. Well, hello everybody in year 13. We had hoped that we'd be able to say a, a proper farewell to you together, but sadly that's not been possible. What a very strange year it's been, but it wouldn't be right if we didn't take this opportunity to say something of a farewell and to thank you for all that you've done. I don't just mean our wonderful head girl, Carolina, our head boy, Alex, our deputies too, Ben and Iris, to all of our house captains and vice captains, senior prefects, you've all been absolutely amazing. You have, amongst other things, helped some of our most vulnerable pupils learn to read, you've acted as mentors, you've supported subject departments, you've given hours and hours in rehearsal time to choirs, orchestras and bands, you've been on tours, performed in plays, you've supervised the school during break time and you've helped to improve our teaching practice through the Learning Commission. You've contributed as house captains and prefects to our wonderful house system and we will remember the sports days that you've contributed to and the house music that you've organised as well. You've also run clubs, societies and activities and much, much more than I've got time to mention today. But most of all, you've been both valuable members of the King's School family and you've made, done your part to make everybody feel as though they belong to that family which we never take for granted. I wanted to say formally, we're not going to forget you um, very soon at all. Don't forget us. We're still hoping to hold a leavers service. And if we can't do that, in spite of our best efforts, we will hold a certificate evening in December, which will be a very special evening. All of those things that you've done for us, you've done while you've had your own commitments and your own lives as well. And I think that deserves special recognition. And I've got someone here He'd like to give their congratulations as well. So well done from Scouts. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Um, stay well. Take care of yourselves and your families. And we look forward to seeing you very shortly.